everyone and welcome back to my channel. If we haven't even met before, my name is Shiv. Hello, if you're coming back, then welcome. In today's video, I have a very, very dramatic, autumnal inspired glam tutorial. To be honest, I'm just kind of like getting back into like my feels with makeup and trying some new kind of, in fact, no, I wouldn't try really anything new. I just wanted to have a play around of makeup and this is what I came up with. So if you'd like to see how I got this look right here, this big kind of dramatic gold glittery cut crease with like smoky edges. We've got a very big glossy lip in here. If you would like to see how I got this makeup look right here, then please carry on watching. Before you do, please give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you're allowed to when I upload a new video. And please follow me on my social media pages. I'm Siobhan Makeup Biz on everything, which is Instagram and TikTok. My handle is Siobhan Makeup Biz. I'm very, very active on TikTok, so probably recommend heading over there. But yeah, if you'd like to see the cat, this how I can't talk because it's very late at night right now. <laughs> but if you'd like to see how to get this look, please carry on watching. Da -da -da -da. Hello, I'm here with a fresh face of no makeup. Le wow. <laughs> Hi guys, so I have a fresh face of no makeup and I'm ready to film. I'm gonna do a really glam, super intense, autumnal vibes, super glam, super sexy kind of makeup look. Just because I feel like jumping back on camera again, I kind of want to do something that's really, really like me. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. And I've got a lot of my like favorite products at the moment to play with in this video, so I'm really excited. So let's just continue. So I've already got my brows on as you can see. Now I'm going to go ahead and prime my lids taking the Be Perfect Perfect Prime Eyeshadow Priming Base. I've actually been really loving this recently. I do love the P. Louise Rumor Number no. 2 base. I've used it so many times and that stuff lasts forever as well but I do find this is a lot quicker to use so if you're just can't be bothered to spend ages like carving out the crease and like patting it down for ages. I think the Be Perfect one is a really good like alternative product just to have in your makeup makeup collection as well but both are amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and take this to prime my lids. So I'm literally just going to kind of take out some of the product from the tube and just kind of sweep that very messily across the lid. Now I'm taking a P. Louise 707 one brush just to smooth out this base. I would definitely recommend doing one eye at a time because this one does dry down like a lot quicker than the P. Louise one. So just for like ease of use. I would recommend doing one eye at a time. I'm just gonna start patting down like the majority of the pro project of the primer. And then I'm just gonna use the side of the brush to sweep underneath the brows, which I already have done using a brow soap. I don't really even really fill in my brows nowadays. I prefer them very natural looking. So I'm just gonna go underneath the brow to create like a little bit of shape there more dimension you know just throwing all these tag words out there and don't forget this part here because there will be like powders and stuff there and then just keep tapping that until you've got a really nice smooth base i also like to take it right on that very very inner corner just because i do actually get quite like blue here randomly <laughs> Now to go back to the feeling me kind of, you know, vibe, I'm going to take the cello tape, the cello tape, I said that like it's a brand, any cello tape will do. I did used to be very like strict with it and only use like really soft kind of micro pore tape, but I'm just going with cello tape nowadays guys, but just for the sake of this video, if you can use gentler tape on your skin. I'm just going to go off and rip off a little bit of cello tape. <laughs> it's got it stuck on my lip. And then I rip it off. I used to do this all the time and every time I do use sellotape in a makeup look I always just feel so much more confident I think it looks nice and sharp like I just love the way it looks personally so I think that's what this kind of video is really instating so I'm just taking that from the lower point of my lash line right up to the brow and pressing it on nice and tight just making sure there's no like skin overlapping anywhere or anything like that just kind of push that down i did use to take it on the back of my hand take off the excess but just being honest i actually feel like that comes off halfway through the kind of makeup like once you get powder all up in there so i'm just gonna go straight in just keeping it real with you i'm just gonna move this brown out the way because it's okay so there you go there is the uh the eye ready for you so i'm just gonna go ahead and pat away the base i'm gonna do one eye at a time just to save some time in this 
video. The so palette of choice today is the Morphe 35U palette. I used this in a video, I want to say it was like two makeup tutorials ago, I haven't really posted that many makeup tutorials so it won't take you that long to find. This is the Morphe 35U palette, it is absolutely gorgeous and I keep it out in like the sort of mainly used palettes just because it is just so versatile, you've got cool tones, warm tones, it's a really good mix of everything in there. But I'm going to base my look around kind of these kind of colours up here so more like the warmer tones like very stereotypical of autumn fall but also like my favorite kind of colors to wear so really really perfect for that the first shade that i'm going to go into is actually this one right here the super super dark chocolatey brown color called sun seeker and i'm gonna take that right through the crease we are gonna do a cut crease if you are a subscriber of my channel and used to watch my makeup tutorials ages ago like during lockdown and stuff when i was uploading them very frequently um you will know my cut crease was like my go-to look it was also the best way that i found to test out eyeshadows because you can kind of play around a lot more of them but i'm just going to do one today because i haven't done one in forever and i'm really excited too so i'm vibing with this moment i am looking around frantically for a mirror because if i look down here i'm gonna be off camera so i'm gonna take that shade sun seeker that chocolatey brown load it up on my brush and the brush i'm using is actually a revolution one this is really really good it's very like similar to a morphe brush but i don't know the name of it it's like a very skinny blending brush so i'll just put some onto the brush tapped off the excess quite a fair bit and then last time i'm just gonna pat down on that lid making sure there's no like creasing because if you put eyeshadow on top of an area that's already creased it's just gonna crease even more so it's best to make sure the surface is very smooth okay so what i'm gonna go ahead and do is just start because that tape is on there like really nice and tight i can literally just use it as a border just to really build up that outer corner i'm gonna put shimmers and stuff on but i just want the base of this look to be really nice and deep and I'm just going to push the brush right into the socket and you'll be able to feel this on your own eye like whether you have hooded eyes, larger eyes, whatever kind of eye you have <laughs> you'll just be able to feel this literally like where your eyeball is so just push that right in there to load up the product nice and deeply it doesn't hurt or anything like that go back and forth, back and forth all the way through right to that inner corner going for a super kind of sexy shimmery eye <laughs> putting that all the way through making sure that's really nice and like opaque and smooth no patchiness or anything so now i've kind of got this scary looking situation there this is where we start to add like the other colors so the next shade that i'm going to take is also very dark but it is like lighter if that makes any sense so i'm taking this shade right here which is called molten so as you can see it's not as dark but it's still fairly deep so i'm going to take that right here and just kind of lay that on top of the edge of the sun seeker dark chocolate brown shade and the brush that i'm using for this is the morphe m456 it's just like a skinny kind of blend and brush blend and brush blend and brush swirl my brush around in the shadow tap off the excess a few times taking my brush around the shadow a few times and tapping off the excess i'm just going to tap very gently on the edges of that chocolate brown just to layer up so like half and half on the area of skin that doesn't have any shadow and then half onto the area of skin that does have the shadow I love about this is you've got that really really intense chocolatey brown and then it's like this pop of like warm rich ready brown just pops out love and this does look crazy right now i know but i'm gonna blend it out add all the shimmer and everything so do not panic at this stage i'm just taking my brush and kind of like wiggling over the edges very very gently i'm not going in like big circular motions because that's just going to bring it up into this blank space here and i don't really have that big of a lid space but this way it doesn't look too kind of crazy see what i mean all right we've got room for one more color for like the brow bone kind of area where you've got that blank space this is where you want to like blend that down almost so i'm not going to go in with like a bone color because i don't really do much but i'm just going to mix a few together so i'm going to take a little bit of this like kind of 
creamy yellowy beige color called bare it's all obviously you would like adapt this look to suit your skin tone but for me i feel like that would work quite well with the shadow there and then i'm going to mix a little bit of beaming which is this very very pale bone color so mixing them two together still creates that nice warmth that will give me that room to kind of like blend it down and create the nice seamless effect. I'm just taking it on my little brush from Ink Show. It's just like a really nice brush company. It's like a really skinny blending brush. I've got quite a few of these and they're really, really good. So I'm just mixing the two shadows together, going back and forth. This won't ruin the shadows or anything like that. So don't worry about like mixing them together. Um, like once you like get rid of the excess shadow, you won't even have tell, you won't even tell that you've mixed them together. Just tapping off the excess. And then I'm just going to start right at the top in that brow bone space because that's where I like kind of want it to be the lightest. I'm literally just going to start going back and forth because that area will be dry by this point. Going back and forth. And this kind of look is a bit of a process where you do kind of add on all the colour so it's nice and packed on there. And then you just start to kind of blend everything together. That's where the magic comes through. Just blending back and forth, like tiny little wiggling motions. Just have a bit of patience, I promise. We will get there and it's gonna look beautiful. And I'm just gonna take it right on this inner corner here, just to make sure it's really nice and blended. That like yellowy tone is really, really nice, pulling it onto the orange, that, like warm, ready, orangey brown. How many colors can I use to describe one color? I just feel like this is pulling together really nicely. I will zoom in right at the end to give you like a clearer look version clear look of the look it's just for now i know that if i zoom in i'm going to be out of focus and it will drive me crazy when i edit the videos so this is what we're going to do with for now so once i've got one layer on there it's looking a bit more blended but still not as best as it could be so i'm basically going to go back through the steps again back and forth until i'm very happy with the kind of outcome so going back in with the sunseeker shade that really dark brown just really deepening up the crease I'm then in with the Ready Brown shade Molten. Doing it tapping motions. I really want to bring that colour back. It's kind of fade a bit. There we go. There she is. Looking pretty. And then back in with that kind of custom bony yellow. That sounds weird. Kind of shade. Blending that through. So now we have this kind of scary looking blended smokiness going on. I'm going to cut the grease. I'm really excited to do this. If you didn't know, my favourite way to do this is to take cotton buds, just standard ones. I use the paper ones that I get in B&M for like £2 or £1, I don't know. And then some micellar water that I've just put into this little bottle just so it's easier. And I will literally use the cotton bud to remove the shadow where I want to like cut the crease and I find this the easiest way to get a really sharp cut crease like every time you don't get the smudginess from having shadow left on your lid when you put concealer on because if you're just going to put eyeshadow base on top of here you're not going to get a crisp line because there's so much shadow already left on there and then also when you do go to actually cut the crease it's so much easier because you've already created that shape so I'm just going to take my cotton bud and micellar water and I'm just going to cut the crease and by doing so I kind of like pull the socket across. I'll go quiet during this because otherwise I will mess it up. I haven't done a cut crease in so long. A tip for this is I would say to keep taking away a tiny little bit at a time when you're new to this and then look into a mirror to see how it would look with your eyes open just because it can be a bit of an illusion when you have hooded eyes. I'm happy with that so as you can see I have literally just removed that kind of space slightly above my crease just so when I open my eye you can still see the magic that I'm going to create on top of that but yeah I'm really happy with that shape and so excited for a cut crease look I keep doing this in this video maybe I'm just so excited to film 
let's go. As a bit of like a base for the cut crease, I found this in my drawer and I don't think I really use these enough anymore because I haven't really been wearing makeup like that often um, as much as I want to. This is the Morphe Metallic Shadow in the shade Draw a Pin. I don't actually know if they sell this anymore, but if they do, obviously I'll link it down below, but any kind of like gold shimmery liquid shadow would work. So I'm just gonna take this and just kind of pop that onto oh my god this is so pretty i'm not going to take it right up to the cut crease line because i'm going to use a brush to help me get a little bit more precision in that area i 100 percent done a look like this on my channel before but for me to get back into the swing of like making makeup videos i need to do things that i'm familiar with to start off with and then we'll see what happens maybe some funky halloween things will come who knows so i'm going to take my brush this is a brush that I can never find a link for. It's from Makeup International London and when I went to makeup like college, I guess, this was in my kit and I could just never find it anywhere. A small concealer brush will be fine. I'm just gonna like go over the middle parts. So there's some on the brush and then just kind of use this to trace that line that we've created from the micellar water. This is really, really pretty, like, and it's set down so quickly. I need to use this on a daily basis. This is stunning. I am gonna put a shadow on top just to make it extra sparkly. So I'm gonna go in with the shade. I actually was gonna take like this kind of like autumnal sparkling color right here, but now I'm drawn more to the wall of the gold. It still gives me autumn vibes because of the smokiness. So I'm gonna take the shade Full of Flash, which is this beautiful sparkly color right here. I'm just gonna take that on a very scratched off MAC 242 brush right here. But I'm not going to wet my brush or anything like that. I don't really tend to do that nowadays. Maybe I should get back into it. Who knows? I've just made sure my brush has a lot of like product on it. And then I'm just going to tap, kind of pull this on top of that colour. This is really nice. It's adding a little bit more like warmth to that gold, which is perfect for that shimmery autumnal vibe thing that I'm trying to do. This kind of is gorgeous, oh my god, so sparkly. Mm. I don't really like what's going on around here. I definitely took the cut crease like too far across. I should have ended it about three quarters of the way across my eye, but it's fine. We will make it work. I'm literally obsessed with how foiled and stunning this looks. Oh my god. God, that's gorgeous, what the hell? Now, because I don't really like what's going on around here, I'm actually going to take the same brush that I had Sunseeker on, just load up the brush with way more product, and just start kind of like tapping over the edges to diffuse that in. Okay, it looks so much better already. Because I haven't done makeup like this in so long, kind of forget all the little like tricks. So I'm just basically tapping very gently over the edge of like where that cut crease is, just to diffuse that edge into the rest of my kind of shadow. And then when it comes to like putting liner and lashes, everything will like merge together so much nicer. Tapping that in, tap, 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 tap. Almost like creating like a liner shape. Okay, I'm so happy with that. I can tell this is gonna be stunning. And the tapes come up. That is why I just put it straight on there. Now it's time to do some liner. I'm actually going to take the Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid liner. I tend to usually use like a felt liner, but I want like a really intense wing today. One that I know is going to be quite shiny. I'm just making sure that tape really stuck down. It's starting to peel it. There we go. So this one here is very, very like intense. Um, the Huda Beauty one is also very intense as well, although it's a little bit messier, I find. So I'm going to take this one here and start doing Doing a wing. Start by making like a line across my eye. And I'm not gonna like extend it or anything like that. I feel like every time I do it, I just don't like the way it looks on me. Okay, so now I've just got like the base on there. I'm just gonna adjust that tape because it is peeling. This is what I mean. When you're playing with loads of shadow, that will happen. Do you see where it started to smudge down a little bit? It's no problem, we can fix it, but I am just gonna retape this up. So if I had taken off the excess at the beginning, it would have made a lot more like mess would have lifted and just been a lot more like annoying. I think I never find the end of the tape. Okay, I'm just going to line this up a little bit. 
and then I can clean, I know I'll have to clean that up so it's not going to be the smoothest of lines but I'll take some cotton burst and some micellar water to clean this line up in a second but the tape just makes it look so much easier, I promise. And what I'm going to do is just keep my eyes open so I can see the shape and then just use the tape as a guide and pull that fairly high up so almost where the dark shadow like stops on my eyeshadow i'm going to connect those two lines together about three quarters of the way and then kind of fill in that triangle this liner is like very easy to work with but it's also quite messy like if you was to accidentally dot yourself it, you'd have to take off the whole eye look but if you want something really intense this is literally perfect and then once that's like dried down just for a moment or two i'm going to peel off the tape that I redid so you can see on the tape there's a little bit of line there which would have ended up on my skin so now I'm gonna go back to that cotton bud for another one and then just take some micellar water and then I'm just gonna clean up that line just pull upwards for the waterline I'm actually going to go in with a little bit of like a turn of events liner what is with this hand action today this is the charlotte tilbury um what is this actually called mesmerizing macaroon maroon <laughs> magic liner duo and it comes with a shimmery side and a matte side i'm gonna take the matte side here this is in the shade um oh mesmerizing maroon not macaroon do you know what I'm talking about? Basically, this is a really, really dark purple brownie colour. And I feel like because I've got green eyes, it makes them pop a little bit more. And just add something extra to the look rather than just black. So I'm going to go ahead and use this in all of my kind of waterline area. I feel like it makes my eyes pop so much more than a black. And like my eyes are green but i just feel like they're the kind of green where if it's certain lighting like gray lighting or certain kind of tones of eyeshadow then they look more blue or like more kind of gray almost i prefer my eyes to look as green as possible i feel like i'm quite protective over my eyes like one of the things that i like about myself you know so it's like when people are like oh your eyes are blue i get like kind of irrational um irrationally upset that's kind of the best way to explain it just like having green eyes like my thing i don't want to lose it but once that's all loaded up on there i'm going to do the lower lash line just to kind of save a little bit of time later on and that way i want to make it like really really dark and smoky so i'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of the be perfect base again like wipe off the excess on the lid so i don't go too crazy and then I'm just kind of dot this on the lower lash line just so the eyeshadow has something to stick to. I feel like we don't really, you know, make sure we prime that lower lash line. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the middle shade, which was Molten, and I forgot to blend out the base. I'm just gonna take my finger and just kind of move it around so it's a little bit blended. And then I'm gonna take that shade Molten, just start by like loading it up on the lower lash line so it's really nice and smoky. I'm gonna add a little bit of blend to my lower lash line once I've done my like, concealer and stuff, but that's just to get that nice smoky base there. Then I'm going to give my lashes a curl. This is the Morphe Eyelash Curler. Give them a good squeeze. Then I'm gonna put on some mascara. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Mascara. good mascara i need to use it more this is why i love filming makeup videos as well because i remember all the stuff that i have that i need to remember to use on a day-to-day -day basis okay now for lashes so i'm actually gonna go off camera do the other eye and then put on a pair of lashes i'm taking half lashes today just because i want to like really elongate that eye these are the lashes from oh my lash and i don't know the name of them but once i find out i'll link them down below they just look like this so they're really really cute like spiky kind of three quarter almost half lashes i really like them because they're nice and wispy but they have gaps between them so you're still going to be able to see the kind of work that i've created on underneath like the lashes rather than just being so chunky that you can't even see the eyeshadow so i'm going to go ahead pop these on off camera do my other eye and i'll be right back i am back with the other eye and lashes on and my eyes look super like intense 
the section. For primer, I'm actually going to take the Illamasqua Hydro Veil. I haven't used this in ages and I feel like I really want a nice hydrated base and this is just absolutely perfect for that as the name goes. This is like a really watery like jelly like kind of finish so I'm going to go ahead and pop this onto my skin. feels so hydrating on the skin. Then for foundation, I'm gonna take the new Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. Well, I don't know how new it is, but to me, it's new. This is in the shade Six Cool. I've used it quite a few times. I really do love this foundation. It's got really beautiful coverage and it just feels like just moisturizer and just amazingness on the skin. Maybe not moisturizer. It feels very light on the skin. If you're used to wearing full coverage foundations, this feels then like moisturizer, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Basically, it just feels really good on the skin. It gives a really nice coverage while making the skin look super healthy um this might be a little bit dark for right now i have got a tan on but it is one of those ones that takes ages to build up one day i will film a makeup tutorial where i actually have like my full developed tan on one day but for now i'm just gonna blend blend it blend it blend it all down the neck but i promise this does match me usually <laughs> so i'm gonna go ahead and pop that on with a damp beauty blender So I got it all, it all work out, blending this all down my chest. For cream, con for cream? <laughs> for cream contour, I'm gonna take the Hollywood Contour Wand from Charlotte Tilbury. This is in the shade medium to deep. This is very dark, but the fair to medium is like very light, I think. So I just like using this shade. I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit onto the Zoeva brush. This is the Zoeva 110 face shape brush. And I'm just going to gradually like kind of tap it and then like buff it into the skin. So just gonna squeeze a little bit out, make sure there's no fluff on the brush and then just kind of load up my brush. I'm just gonna start kind of like stippling that on and then I will blend. It looks crazy, I know, just trust the process. See, I thought me putting it onto the brush would mean I would go a little bit less crazy and actually I'm fact i think it's had the opposite effect but you have to do both on each side so it's even <laughs> i'm actually just going to take my beauty blender just because this is a lot and it just shows that not every time makeup goes perfectly you guys i'm just gonna blend out kind of like the edges just because this is getting a little bit cray cray so I'm back from a little break. I'm gonna take the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer in the shade Almond. Almond, Almond. And just going to start off with my first concealer. I have a very light one I want to apply in a little bit. But I'm just gonna apply this in like the main kind of areas just to kind of get rid of the bronzer mess, basically. Cover up this big spot on my forehead. <laughs> And I'm gonna pack it on, really like pack it on basically. I like to take it right under that eyeliner to really like sculpt it out and make it look smudged. Blending that out with my beauty blender. And then I'll just take the brush that had the cream contour on and just kind of like buff out, buff out this little line here. I'm now gonna pop some Made by Mitchell blush on. I really had to like think about what I was saying. The Made by Mitchell liquid blusher, the blush in the shade Posy Rosy. It's like a deeper kind of tone, so I thought it would tie in like the autumnal vibes. I'm just gonna go ahead and just pop that onto like the higher points of the cheeks and then I'll blend it out with a brush. This is just personally like how I like to apply it, but um, you can pop it on a sponge first, you can pop it on a brush first, just however you like to use them. So I'd say like a big kind of fluffy synthetic brush. This is a brush from the brand Le Boit Soye. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of like stamp it out to blend it. I recommend kind of like twisting the brush almost just so you get like an even kind of blend. Making sure there's no like harsh edges, keeping it nice and high. So 
blush is just so gorgeous literally obsessed wow I feel like that ties in the look so nicely like it does look a little bit crazy now but once you pop on like powders it just really seals everything together and not that it matters because i'll be taking this off soon because it's very late right now but it will make your makeup last so much longer when you use like multiple kind of cream products in your look now I'm going to set the face using the Huda Beauty Pound Cake Powder. I'm going to go ahead and pop a little bit under like my eyes and then I'll just kind of dust it around my face and definitely just dropped the lid and it went everywhere but it's fine. The only thing I hate about this powder is I can never get it out properly and I don't like dipping my sponge like into the netting because you can't really get it once you've used like a fair bit of it. And then I'm just going to roll my sponge kind of like around in the powder and just pop some of this underneath my eyes. Baked my nose a little bit. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of light kind of like baking on like the troubled areas. So blemishes, areas where I do get kind of, I guess, creasing like around the smile lines. Chin, always the chin. And then I'm going to take a fluffy brush and just kind of like pat and blend the powder into the skin. Make sure to really set everything down. Do stumping motions initially. I just realised I forgot to put the lighter concealer on that I said I was going to do, but it's fine. It's just because it's very late at night now. I spent ages filming this video, so I'm like forgetting things. Like every time I don't do it for ages and then go back to filming, I, when I'm doing it, I remember how much I love it. It's just the initial starting, for some reason, I get like a mental blockage. I have got powder everywhere, you guys. I just dropped the lid and it just went everywhere. Bronzer, I'm gonna take the Doll Beauty Gimme Sun Bronzer in the shade Medium, which looks like this. This is like my go-to bronzer. I absolutely love it. I did use to use a NYX one, but I mean, this is so much bigger. It lasts longer and it's heart shaped so it's an obvious. I'm just gonna go ahead and take a big fluffy brush and like bronze up my face. It's kind of like the usual place it's like where I put that kind of very intense cream that I've like managed to get down a little bit but I'm just gonna be very light handed like see I'm holding the brush quite far down so it's not super intense. <laughs> For blush, I'm going to take this Nabla Skin Glazing Glass Skin Finish Glow Powder. Just because the Made by Mitchell, Made by Mitchell blush underneath is actually quite intense, you can still kind of see it. But I just want to add a little bit of like life back to the skin now we've powdered. So I'm just going to take this, which has a little bit of a sheen on it. It's going to look really nice, like on top. Just doing literally like a tiny, tiny little like topping on my blush. And then I'm just going to take the powder brush, the bronzer brush even, and just tap over it. I'm just going to bring the life back to the skin. This is where everything will really come together. I'm going to set the face using the I Heart Revolution Pineapple Setting Spray. I actually really, really like this setting spray. It just feels really like hydrating on the skin. So I like this. Don't have my little hand fan to hand. Huh. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the foundation of my lips just because I'm gonna be putting on a lipstick and lip gloss. I don't wanna to be too much on my lips. So I'm just taking some micellar water on some cotton buds, the best tools you know. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take that off. I feel like doing this as well, you also get a really nice like definition because you know exactly where to put the lip liner. I have had my lips um <laughs> I've had lip blush basically, so they're quite pink. They're pink anyway, but they're more of like an even colour and I have natural definition. So doing this, I can really like find out where it is. For lips, for lip liner, I'm going to take the Peaches and Cream Praline Lip Liner. And then for lipstick, I'm gonna take the Dull Beauty Golden Girl Lipstick. This is like very pale, but I'm gonna put a gloss over the top. And then to finish this look, I'm gonna take the Fenty Heat Gloss in the shade Lemon Lava, which adds a nice little bit of sparkle. Honest, I probably would go for a different lip but I'm into this look you know I feel like it's very dramatic and it's giving a lot of things <laughs> 
This is the incredibly dramatic, to be honest, I didn't know it would be this dramatic, but here we are. I was just playing with makeup. I wanted to create something like autumnal glam inspired. Obviously take this what you will. If you don't like the big cut crease, dull it down. If you don't like the lip, take the lip away. If you didn't like the crazy contour, neither did I, but we rolled with it. <laughs> so yeah, it's just a bit of fun, but I really like this kind of overall vibe. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and seeing how I recreated, well, created this look, I guess. It's definitely gonna take me a while to get into the swing of filming again, but I'm gonna try. Yeah, this is the finished, finished look. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. It means the absolute world. And please go ahead and follow me on my social media pages. I'm very, very active on TikTok. My handle is Siobhan Makeup Biz and the same on Instagram as well. So go and check those out. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you for watching. <laughs> See you later. Bye.